Neil Ratner Rockdoc here with a story. So, we think rock stars as we think of rock stars as only being rock stars, but many have surprising hidden talents often leading to second careers. And today I thought I would tell you about a few. <laughs> now, I've told you in the past about Jeff Skunk Baxter from both Steely Dan and the Doobie Brothers, but also a missile defense expert who even chaired a congressional advisory board on missile defense. And Brian May from Queen, the astrophysicist who has published books on astrophysics while also serving a term as the chancellor of Liverpool John Moores University. And we all know about Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden, a registered commercial airline pilot, flying big jets, mind you, <laughs> and the painter Ronnie Wood, and the photographer Graham Nash. But here are a few hidden talents you might not have heard about. And let's start with none other than Bob Dylan. Dylan, the iron worker of all things. Now, Bob grew up in Hibbing, Minnesota, which is a city really built on iron ore. As a matter of fact, at the edge of town is the largest open pit iron mine in the world. And according to Bob, I've been around iron all my life. Ever since I was a kid, I was born and raised in iron ore country where you could breathe it and smell it every day. And I've always worked with it in one form or another. And believe it or not, one of Dylan's latest projects is an elaborate 26 foot by 15 foot iron archway commissioned by the casino operator MGM for their huge new casino in Maryland. Now, the piece is titled Portal, and for this sculpture, Bob used found objects and scrap metal from junkyards, everything from farm equipment, children's toys, kitchen utensils, and antique firearms to chains, cogs, axes, and wheels. Dylan added, Gates appeal to me because of the negative space they allow. They can be closed, but at the same time, they allow the seasons and breezes to enter and flow. They can shut you out or shut you in. And in some ways, there's no difference. <laughs> now... If you happen to live in New York City between 1985 and 2006 and you called 911 for an ambulance, you might have been seriously surprised when one of the EMTs looked vaguely familiar and turned out to be none other than David Lee Roth. <laughs> David took part in more than 200 ambulance calls and was both well-liked and well respected by his supervisors. Man, when I was a doctor, that would have been fun to work with David, but it never happened. All right. And how about Roger Daltrey, the trout farmer? Daltrey has owned the Lake Down Trout Fishery for decades. He designed the four spring fed lakes, which now total 26 acres near Heathfield in East uh, Sussex. And he has even been honored by trout. Fisherman Magazine. Okay, so I'm going to end with a nice story, because it's around Christmas and everything, about Neil Young. All right, so let's listen to a little bit of Neil while I tell you the story. One of my favorites.
So, ever since Neil was six or seven years old, when his father set up a small L-shaped table with tracks and bought Neil his first train set, Young has been fascinated by model trains. As a matter of fact, Neil calls himself a real train nerd. And in the 90s, he was looking for a way to share time with his younger son, Ben, who has cerebral palsy. Now, according to Neil, when I started building the railroad, I built it so that my son and I could have something to do together, especially when we found out how disabled Ben was physically. Well, it ended up going much farther than that. Young partnered with the owner of the famous Lionel model trains, and he developed a remote control, making it easier for handicapped kids to operate model trains. He also created an audio device that replicates train sounds, and when Lionel fell on hard times, Young partnered with an investment firm to save the company. Good guy. Recently, all that stuff went up for auction. He actually made a lot of money from it, but that wasn't the intention. But for me, the coolest part of the story are the lessons Young said he learned from Ben through this experience. And I quote, Ben has taught me to never give up. You can't say this is too hard. It can't be too hard. There's so many kids with challenges that are so great, and yet they just keep trying. So if I come up against something that's hard to deal with, I can handle it. And it's because of him. Let's go. And I'm getting old. <laughs> so that's it, man. Yeah. Have a great Saturday, and I will see you tomorrow for a Christmas story. Okay, now. Bye.